So, Paul, these neutron star binaries are pretty wild. They have huge amounts of energy and seem to me to have a huge amount of potential to fill the sky with interesting objects. Do you got any ideas of what you think are maybe the most interesting objects in the sky? Well, I think possibly the weirdest of this whole weird category would have to be SS433, which was like a complete bombshell to the astronomical community when it was discovered back in the 1970s. It's got a good name, too. Sounds yeah. important. Yes. And normally, if you look at the spectrum of one of these X-ray binaries, you'd expect to see a particular emission line, say H-alpha, uh, from the gas around the disk. Now, this particular object, SS433, uh, was observed here in Australia at the Anglo-Australian Observatory, and it was an X-ray source and a faint radio source, and it seemed to have a sort of nebula around it that might have been the remains of a blast wave or something, so it was an interesting target. And when they looked at it, they got a spectrum, and sure enough, it had the big line there, but also had a line over here. Ooh. And another and, one hiding behind you, but they didn't too, see that yeah. one. Their original data only covered this range, because the ah, spectrographs okay. weren't too good back then. And this caused them a lot of puzzle, because they'd look up okay, line here, and what you normally do is you look at a line, and you look up the list of elements and see which one showed up at that wavelength. But there wasn't any really obvious plausible element that showed up at that wavelength. Mm. So what's going on? Uh, some mystery of kryptonite or something like this, some well, new weird element? New Don't element, in a good way. You know, astronomers think of the uh, universe as being the, the world's greatest laboratory, so maybe it's a new element. But, well, they went to reobserve it a bit later, and it had gone. Okay, so... So what do you think when that happens? You think you've already stuffed up your spectrum somehow? Well, when I see something really weird, I just assume there was a little glitch. A cosmic ray came in and wasn't right, yeah. Okay, so they, they thought it was a bit funny, but mm, yeah, maybe we shouldn't publish that, maybe. Yep. So, uh, worth avoiding sweeping under the carpet a little bit. However, when more observations were made, this time in California, people discovered that, first of all, there were two of these things, but they also, they came and went, they came back, and they moved around. So they'd actually oh. move backwards and forwards in wavelength, in a symmetrical way. So you see they'd go both in closer towards the line and both further away from it. Oh. Now, what, what could cause that? Well, my sense is it's probably not a bunch of new elements being synthesized, but it strikes me as something that seems related to the Doppler shift somehow. Yeah, I mean, an element can't move around. It's always going to be at the same wavelength, so yeah. this is presumably something that's moving. And given there are two of them on roughly symmetrically, they're not exactly on either side of this, maybe it's this line, but there's some gas coming out from this thing moving towards us and going away from us. So what's the implied velocity of the gas? Well, these are a long way separated. We're talking more than 20% of the speed of light to make this happen. 20% of the speed of light? Yes. Wow, okay, so that's a lot. That's a pretty hard thing to... That, that's a pretty amazing uh, velocity indicated. But the amazing thing is, of course, we have a neutron star here, so almost a black hole, so you really can't imagine getting things up to that type of speed, potentially. Yeah, but that was, you'd think that would be stuff, stuff falling in. Maybe there's stuff falling in from one side and falling in from the other side. And so this stuff that's um, blue shifted is on the far side falling in, and that stuff that's red shifted is on the near side going in. But when they actually observe this thing with more modern radio telescopes, what you see is something like this. Oh, it's a corkscrew. Now, you're the expert on corkscrews here, Brian. Uh, yes, although mine uh, tend to be used for extracting things, not uh, just playing around in space. So let's see, we have literally this amazing corkscrew in both directions. Now, that sort of sounds like a jet, but a jet which is being processed. I can't, I'm not coordinated enough to do both arms, but if I do that with a fire hose, which I do sometimes on a hot day, I'll get a corkscrew out, and if the fire hoses are stuck out, then they'll kind of go like that, like a kayaker, and you'll get exactly that thing. So but it's a, a jet moving at 20% of the speed of light. Yes, and we know um, in the first course we talked about quasars and how had, they had these jets squirting out. This is not a quasar, it's a neutron star binary in our own galaxy, but it seems to have the same sort of thing, two jets being squirted out opposite directions, but as you say, they are processing. They're moving around something like this, and that's a bit weird. So what's going on here? I guess the idea would be that this is, as we said, normal, a, a star that's donating mass, which is forming an accretion disk and swirling down to the neutron star in the middle. But somehow, as gas comes in, some of it goes out at this enormous speed. And this is a bit weird. I mean, why should stuff falling in produce stuff going out? 
Uh, it's in fact embarrassing that we actually never observe stuff falling into these things. We only infer right. it indirectly, but all we ever see is stuff coming out. But we know this is common whenever we have a disk. So, for example, a protoplanetary disk, as was covered in the first course, we get jets coming out from there, so called bipolar outflows. We know that quasars you get a disk around a black hole, and that produces a jet. So it seems to be generically true that you get jets quite often. But why are you getting a jet in this one and all the other X-ray binaries? Hmm. Well, it's not obvious to me why you would get it, but it is interesting that if you have a big mass here and this thing it might precess around like a giant top, you know, the Earth precesses around every 26,000 years. Because of the moon pulling on it. Yeah, the moon and the sun interaction. So it's not completely crazy, but that whole process of how to create a jet from infalling material is one of those sort of mysteries of the universe still. It's probably got to do with magnetic fields. Whenever we don't know what's going on, we invoke magnetic fields. That's right. Now, interestingly enough, Paul, with our SkyMapper telescope, we were out looking around for objects, in our case, some of the first oldest stars in the universe, and we look at them by finding things that have very funny colors. And we found an object that sort of looks like this. It's not exactly the same, uh, but we found something that seems to be having jets shooting out at you know a large speeds in a way analogous to this but it's in a very funny location it's not towards where young stars are in the galaxy it's kind of off a long ways away from the galaxy so it's maybe sort of a dead version of this like a really old version of this or something we're not sure we still need to get more data but it's one of the exciting things that you can find there's not really nothing else like it that anyone's ever discovered before okay so maybe ss433 is not alone in the universe